Americans have been plagued by long delays and flight cancellations for months. And now Vermont's very own Senator Bernie Sanders is calling on Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to fine airlines for last minute flight cancellations. Bernie's proposal asks Mayor Pete to fully refund passengers who wait over an hour for their flight and impose fines on airlines for flights delayed over two hours. In addition, airlines would be fined $55,000 per passenger if they cancel flights they knew in advance could not be fully staffed. And Bernie's not alone with his frustration. Senate candidate John Fetterman also calling on the administration to fine airlines $27,500 per passenger for each understaffed flight cancellation. Meanwhile, Buttigieg uh, told M- NBC about the staffing shortages ahead of the July 4th holiday. Let's watch that. But the airlines got a lot of money, over $50 billion. A lot right. of that was, the, the idea was that you wouldn't have to lay off people, that you could keep people employed. So the, the point of this taxpayer funding was to keep people in their jobs. And one of the best things about uh, the rescue plan, for example, was the news that uh, airline employees were told to tear up their furlough notices when it came through. But we also saw that a lot of people, including pilots, were nudged into early retirement by the airlines. That certainly is something that reduced the labor force that right now we're really counting on. You say there's no staffing issue with air traffic control. Are there other issues, though, within your purview that are slowing the system down? Let me be clear. We have had our challenges with air traffic control, but they do not explain the majority of the cancellations and the delays that we've seen out there. Oh, hmm. This is so frustrating. What? This is exactly yeah. why you don't do industry specific bailouts. They will always break your heart. How does he, he sounds, Pete is, it, well, how could he not know? Like they sound confused and surprised that we gave an industry all this money and they didn't do exactly what we wanted with it. They never do. And it's so, and I, I also don't, the idea of trying to find them, why don't we just do, why doesn't the government do something that is actually under their purview, which is the freaking TSA, they can get rid of it that is something they created that they could get rid of that would made, make flying much more easier, more convenient, less expensive, less time wasting. There'd be fewer lines. People could get to their gate at, you know, right uh, in, in a reasonable time be- before their flight instead of trying to guess how much time getting through security is going to take you at the, at the airport. Security measures that do not meaningfully contribute to safety whatsoever has been ha- found a thousand times over. I, I would love to have uh every you know senator get on board with a abolish the tsa bill tomorrow i i would i'll, I'll vote forever for whoever uh, proposes it first all right robbie I'm, I'm with you on the tsa stuff but this is these are issues the 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 policy that bernie is proposing here and john fetterman is proposing here is about a very specific issue that's causing delays not delays of people getting into their gate but delays across the board flights not taking off yeah. flights getting canceled because of these staffing issues and i would agree with you with respect to the bailout i don't think that we should be continuing to give money to corporations when we cannot enforce a basic policy like don't lay people off you know we said in the in the as a condition of the bailout money that you can't lay people off that the whole point of this bailout was to keep the economy going, keep flights going throughout the pandemic. But the reality is that they found a, a workaround because that's what corporatists do. That's what people like Mackenzie Peach know all about, given that that's his background, they find work uh, workarounds. And so they got all the money and then they, they once they secured the bag, as it were, they let go of all of these employees. And now they're still trying to collect the same amount of fees from flyers and have the same amount of flights that they had before with lower staff. And they have fly, uh, pilots and, and crew burning the candle at both ends, which frankly doesn't sound very safe to me on top of everything else. These are people that we trust with our lives. Um, and that all of this is because the airlines are trying to eke out more and more profit. So what do you think about the policy that's on the table right now? Actually making it so that instead of putting the cost onto the consumer and say, saying, oh, we tried to book all these flights, I guess we didn't have pilots, now you're SOL and just sitting in the airport or you're missing your daughter's wedding or whatever, and then and instead putting the onus on airplane, the airlines industries, who have the ability to know in advance what their staffing needs are and whether or not a plane is going to take off the ground, but decline to let passengers know because they know that they can get us to the airport, which costs $80 to get there in a taxi or hours to get there on the train if you're in a city like New York. And knows once we get once we get there, we're captive hostages, and we'll just go they, wherever they tell us to go. Finding fine, uh, finding the airline, they're going to pass that cost along to consumers as well. Why wouldn't they just pass that cost on too? 
the airline t- ticket prices are are high enough as it is. I I, I mean, that's, more that's why the fines are calculated to be so high. Do. I think that's exactly yeah. why the costs are calculated to be so high. If it's that kind of a damaging blow, there's no way. I mean, no, the, the airline would go out of business. There's no there's no yeah. um, passenger who can pay fifty five thousand dollars for a seat. Even you know millionaires and billionaires aren't wanting to pay fifty five thousand well, no, dollars no, no, for a seat they, they could no, buy no, on no, their own plane. They, Right. They, well, well, they, they would split it up. Split right? that up among the, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't well, have to the literally well, no, no, make no, a the, consumer pay $55,000. They just raise the cost much. of every, yeah, the, the, right, the, the, yeah. That's exactly, some people are saying these fees are too high. No, I, I, my understanding is that the fees are calculated to be that high exactly so it's not just a marginal difference. They can pass that on the consumer. It's all or nothing. Yeah. Either they fly the planes right and calculate the staffing issues right and hire the people they need to staff, and, and they will take a hit on their profit margins for doing that, or they go ahead they and go out of business. They won't take a hit on their profit margins because they'll just increase the cost of every flight by like a dollar or something and then recoup that cost. <sighs> so is, they're basically is... doing, they're doing what they've done for, for a long time and now they're just doing it kind of amplified. But you know, it, there's a long history of airlines overbooking flights. They book too many seats. They know they don't have that many seats on an airline, on a, on a, on a plane. And yet they still do it because they figure, well, we can delay some passengers or maybe some don't show up or whatever that might be. And now what we're seeing is this sort of methodology on steroids, right? So what they're doing is these airlines know they don't have the staff for these flights. They're But they're selling yes. you the flight anyway. Yes. Just like they sell you the seat and they sold, they sold all three of us the same seat, right? And they go, well, you know, we'll work it out. Or, and now they're doing that basically that same thing, but they're doing it on steroids. They're selling an entire flight to people knowing that flight is never going to go off the ground. And that's the issue. That definitely has to be stopped. Even them overbooking flights needs to be, I mean, there could be some sort of calculus on that, but they do it to an, an excess as it is. And now they're doing this. Something does have to stop them from just selling, you know, ghost flights. These right. don't exist. That right. shouldn't be allowed. You should have to sell a flight you know actually exists and will get off the ground. Right. It's and fraud. if you're not, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's like basic business, right? Yeah, they're 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 defrauding passengers repeatedly and with knowledge. Right. And we used to have a consumer protection movement in this country and an understanding that our our time mattered, our dollars mattered, and that even if a price of something was high, that we got something uh, a value in exchange. Nobody right. feels like that's the case when they take a flight anymore. And the idea that there are these corporatists who are defending the airline industry, making hand over fist profit, at the same time that we, the taxpayer, bail them out. There's a lot of conversation about how it'll be passed on to the consumer. What about the fact that the consumer has already paid to keep these businesses, businesses yeah. afloat? CEOs yeah, are still profiting hand over fist. The idea, you know, we, if you want to talk about passing costs off to consumers, then you need to get on board with some of these corporate price gouging acts that progressives are also trying to pass that will prevent that kind of behavior. But having a laissez-faire attitude saying, well, everything's going to trickle down to the consumer no matter what, so we're just going to line up and continue to get screwed until time immemorial, doesn't seem to me to be good policy or good politics. Yeah, we got to regulate it somehow. I mean, come on, Robbie, we got to be able to regulate this. You can't sell flights that don't exist. You can't sell product that doesn't exist to people and just get away with it. There's got to be I mean, a control on that. Well, all, that's already, so if, if they're committing fraud, uh, if it meets the definition of fraud, then yeah, they should be, we don't need new laws to prosecute them for that, right? Fraud's already illegal. Um, well, I don't know. Oh, what please. Is, yeah, what is they, the they do? probably they, they they do you know who writes the definitions of these kinds of um, corporate liability statutes? It's the corporations. <laughs> you're, you're never. If, if, any, if we learned anything from this week of Supreme Court cases, is that you should not be relying on the court system to impart justice here. You just you just can't. The reality well, of the matter. So we're supposed to we're supposed to rely on their lobbyist bought uh, uh, political operatives. That I mean, it's. Well, I don't know about you, Robbie, you, but I don't vote for candidates. Op- I personally do not vote for candidates that don't take corporate money. And I think that everyone on every part of the political spectrum should be doing yeah. the same. And we have a lot better brand of politics in this country. On both sides, yeah. And that's and that right. trend is happening a bit on the Republican side of the aisle as well. There are some that have sworn off corporate money and, you know, would love to see more of that. Would love to see all of them do it. But I'm and sure then they would find a workaround. I would, I would love to vote. I would love to vote in political figures who don't vote. To, to give to take my tax dollars and just give them to the industry as a bailout. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, and there's that too. The, I agree. I don't yeah. think we should be bailing out companies well, either. Well, for the record, yeah. both uh, Fetterman and Bernie Sanders are two of those unbought candidates. It's why so many people find them to be so popular. And I think it's not an accident that it's why it's those two that are pushing this kind of agenda 
forward yeah. right now. We'll see what the people have to say. We'll have Free a win now, for you. TSA. Free win. <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> I, I'm also on board with his TSA plan. All right, Robbie, you, you win that one too. We'll have more <laughs> rising for you <laughs> right after this.